Sean Carmel Fisher and you're watching the Sequoia Spotlight. We are live at the LD Micro Invitational at the Four Seasons Hotel here in Westlake Village, California. With me, I have CEO of Live One Inc., a ticker LVO, and it's uh, CEO Robert Ellen. Welcome. Thank you. So great having you. Have you presented as yet? I did. I, I just finished the presentation a couple minutes ago, and it was, it was great to see a full room. Excellent. Yeah, it's a really great turnout here uh, for the past two days. Yeah, Chris has done an amazing job. As usual, right? As usual. I've been, okay. I've been at every conference of his presenting for years. Yeah, and it just gets getting better and better, right? Please uh, tell us more about what Live One does, and uh, yeah, pull yeah us So in. we're we're a music platform, music subscription, and membership service uh, that is a super high end service. Think of us as Spotify, but built around original programming. We have 30 million songs. We have over 350 of our own original podcasts. I, we have streamed more artists than anyone in history. Excellent. Sounds exciting. Um, what brings you into this business, like this space, the industry? What's, what's, what's Rob passionate yeah. about? That's a, that's a great question. I saw this blinking, blinking green light. I come off a of building digital turbine, super successful public company. And I bought a music venue called Lund Coco in London, which if you've ever been, is an iconic venue. And we did a TV show called London Live, and it reached 70 countries and 300 million people. Wow. When I saw that, I said, we could take this and build the ESPN of music. Could we buy up the rights, the digital rights to music around the world? And we started buying up the rights to Rock and Rio and EDC and Outside Lands and Hangout. And with that, we got the biggest artist in the world. And we had hosts and reporters and content. It became really special for the music industry. Sounds exciting. Um, what are the, the, the biggest strengths that you think um, Live One kind of espouses at this point? Yeah, so all of my company has been built on the backs of technology. We have world-class technology. We have a world-class management team. We have a world-class board. And then the finale is, is this is the time in our lives for the first time where content is not only king, but it's King Kong. <laughs> IP has become so expensive and there's so much distribution that there's a world right now that must have content and especially must have live and must have music. Oh, yes, for sure. When we're just coming out of the, the global pandemic, did you guys see any impact related to that with your live events, I can imagine? Anything uh, else? Yeah, it was like getting punched in the face 50 oh, times. Yeah. <laughs> so all of our live partners from Live Nation to AEG to iHeart to our own live content was all shut down. Over $25 million of revenues and hundreds of events were no longer on our platform. So we had to pivot and we had to look ourselves and get into the bunkers and fight through. And we grew the business from $38 million to proudly we finished this year, March 31st, with over $112 million in revenues. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so any new exciting products or services or events or anything coming up in the near future? Yeah, we'd like to talk about the flywheel, right? What is, what is the creator getting, right? So we bought this amazing podcast business called Podcast One, which I'm sure you know. Right. We just announced, yeah, I think it was yesterday, we announced that we're taking our podcaster on the road. But not only are we taking them on the road live and selling tickets to it, we're going to sell pay-per-view to it. And we're going to do meet and greets, both live and digital. So we give those creators an opportunity to reach an audience and expand it to 220 countries. Excellent. That sounds really exciting. Um, so there are trends, of course, in any industry. How do you manage those trends or stay, stay ahead of them? You know, it goes under the philosophy, people lie and numbers don't. We've had 2.8 billion downloads of our podcast. We've had 5 wow. billion engagements of our live music. So not only did kids watch, but they repurposed it and put it back over the internet, back over their social media to their friends and family. All right? So it's all about numbers. Right? Right. The more traffic we get, the more the artists, those social media stars, tell their fans to listen and watch, the more traffic, the more sponsors, the more subscribers. Our subscription has grown from 400,000 to now 2.3 million monthly subscribers. Excellent. So given all those exciting numbers, what's the guidance that you can provide for the future? Yeah, so I just gave out our financial guidance. We just finished our year. We publicly said we did 112 million off from 65 last year. What I just said is it just raised my guidance for the third time, saying we're going to do this year between 125 and 140 million. And for the first time ever, EBITDA positive. We're going to do between 5 and 10 million of EBITDA. And my entire team knows that we better beat that 10 million of EBITDA. 
What are you planning on doing differently uh, to get to that level? Well, the first thing we did is we had to take some costs out of the business. We consolidated six companies. We have six TAMs, and each of those have a billion to $10 billion plus in upside. So we had to consolidate, and we had to pick the team that was getting in the bunkers, why it was going to run each of those verticals and each of those, those teams. So we've done a great job of taking $20 million of costs out of the business and now consolidating in and now hitting this quarter the first time EBITDA positive. Right. So we're all aware of the market conditions that are not as stable as we would like, uh, impacting you know companies across the board and tickers across the board. What kind of steps will you be taking to you know stay resilient through these times? Yeah, so first, we took those costs out. Second is we picked the cream of the crop on management team to step up and really be in those bunkers and understand these markets. Right. I think I think what's really special about this company, my team's been here. All right, my last company in two thousand eight. Dropped six hundred million dollar in market cap, right, and then rallied back and went up by ten billion dollars. Right, so we've been through this before. We understand there are going to be cycles in the market, right? And the biggest cycle you better focus for everyone, for every CEO that's here, you better focus on making money. Yeah, and focus on those fundamentals, right? Correct. Your gross margins, your net margins, but at the end of the day, is it all comes down to is you better deliver EBITDA and you better deliver cash flow. Wonderful. So apart from the great um, earnings you've recently just mentioned, uh, any other news that we should highlight for our viewers today? Yeah, so my, my biggest partner is Elon Musk and Tesla. We're the default radio in every car and we're part of their connectivity package. We've just launched our podcast into the cars. So for the first time ever, we can start to deliver sponsorship dollars as well as subscription dollars. And this is an amazing partnership. It's nine years now, right, and growing and you know, hundred dollar oil is very dangerous for everyone, for all of us. Uh, it's very hard. But for the auto industry, I've always been a huge believer in automated cars. And what Lee Elon do has done has been revolutionary. Everybody should own an automated car. Everyone should be getting away from those gas tanks and trying to help in every way they can. And so we get the luxury of growing with them dynamically and putting podcasts in there. Next, next up is. Hopefully we can put video on those cars, it's automated cars. So anything else you want me to specifically still touch on? I mean, I think, I think for all the companies here, I think the energy has got to be around. We announced a buyback of our stock, all right? So we're buying back over, over we, we announced a 2 million share buyback of our stock. Um, you got to show confidence in your business. You got to show confidence. My hands, my feet, and my mouth all go in the same direction. I personally just bought back a lot of stock. I've invested over $18.5 million personally in the company, and I'll continue in every window to be a buyer. We also have expanded our relationship again with JP Morgan as our bankers to make sure we explore all opportunities for our shareholders to increase that value. And we announced a spinoff of our pay per view business. All right, so look forward to that really exciting news coming in the very near future. Wonderful. We'll keep our eyes peeled. Where can we find more information? Go to our website, liveone.com. Go to our app, download our app. You get to download it for free. We're a freemium model. And if you really enjoy it, you get to get the luxury of watching the best talent in the world perform where you cannot see it anywhere else. Excellent. I'll be sure to get my uh, download real soon. Thank you Thank so you. much. Now, key takeaways for our audience real fast. We've had a wonderful conversation. Let's condense that into a few uh, key takeaways so they know what to leave from uh, take away from this conversation. Massive growth, survived, survived COVID, came out of it with massive growth, 38 million to 112 million plus. This year, 125 to 140 million. That massive growth. Bottom line, EBITDA positive this quarter. We end our quarter in a couple of weeks. EBITDA positive. This year, you know, laser focus, five to ten million dollars of EBITDA and growing. Excellent. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed this conversation and you're watching the Sequoia Spotlight. Stay tuned for more.